I am here, first and foremost, to give you confidence, brothers and sisters, that this is possible. It is very, very possible. Our struggle continues. General Museveni is cracking down on all people of Uganda, even when they are not violent, because he is scared of the people. But I want to remind you, friends, that just here in the neighborhood in Sudan, Museveni's friend, Omar El Bashir, had apparently won the election with 94.05. He gave himself 94.05 in an election in 2015. And he gave himself the majority in parliament. But in 2018, he was kicked off by unarmed citizens who knew their rights and they asserted their rights. A few of them were killed. Very many of them were imprisoned. But they cannot imprison all of us. Allow me to thank and salute all the friends that have responded to this, our call. We've seen Ugandans protesting. I saw uh, some led by Honorable Nyeko Derek protesting peacefully, kneeling down and showing their dissatisfaction. I saw others in Kawempe. I saw many. It is the final channel of Being the No. Onakurwalero, Katandi Kideku, Ogerakwa, President Yoelim Seven. We have day on our gamba and put not a lavanga who want one more bakaluru, Gabobi way anyway. A caller Nava no punti, Baba, Kaluka, President in Museven, Nake and Yinine, Yunya, Ganepolis and Vude Munti, Rasenga Simaje, Eh, into Chandua de Chilala new. Ne Bobby wine, Ne Yamamua Nukude, Mo address, state of the nation address, Diakoze, Ne Kuraivu, Nozakan Cleo, Bobby wine, Akunio, Nole Yeti, Yategate de Mu, Mukogera for President. Friends, in, 19, in the 1980s, we all remember General Museveni saying, and I quote, What else can one do when a government has closed all ways of peaceful change? What can we do other than resigning to slavery? He said that before he and his friends took up arms, which led to the death of more than half a million people. That was in 1980. There's a book that I've been reading. This book is called Mission to Freedom. Uganda Resistance News. It was written between 1981 and 1985. This book was written by Museveni and his friends. Um, I want to quote from this very book. I will read for you a little bit from page three. It says, and I read, the right of rebellion against tyranny has been recognized from the most ancient of times to the present day by men of all creeds, ideas, and doctrines. It is part and parcel of the notion of political liberty. It transcends any narrow laws enacted by petty dictators and despots. The right to rebellion transcends any laws enacted by petty dictators and despots, just like Museveni. He goes on to say, the right to rebel against tyranny was at the very root of the American war of independence against the British imperialism. It was at the root of the French Revolution against divine right and monarchical despotism, despotism. It was at the root of many successful anti-colonial wars in countries here in Africa and elsewhere. For example, Algeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Angola, and others. Even the, mom, the normally impatriable Britons found occasion to invoke this right on a number of occasions. Once at Rudumide, to force King John to sign the Magna Carta, and on other occasions to depose crowned kings like James II and Charles. This golden right was aptly defined by the American Declaration of Independence signed on July 4, 1776 in Philadelphia. Museven goes on to say, we, 
to, he goes on to quote uh, the declaration of uh, the American Declaration of Independence, and that was in 1776. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable, inalienable rights, that among these are the right to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter, abolish it, and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Museveni goes on to say, Indeed, rebellion against tyranny is not only a right, it is a duty for all oppressed people to carry out. The glorious men of the French Revolution stated this truth most aptly in their declaration of rights of man. When, when, when a government violates the rights of the people, insurrection is for, them and, is for them the most sacred of rights and most imperative of duty. Moody Rebigambo Biyamu Seven, that is Museven. He says, I'll read this again. The glorious men the glorious men of the French Revolution stated this truth most aptly in their declaration of the rights of man, that when government violates the rights of the people, insurrection is for them the most sacred of rights and the most imperative of duties. The people of Uganda have invoked this right and arisen to the call of duty and taken up arms against Obote's regime of blood oppression and national shame then he asked he went ahead to give us a justification of the war these words were spoken by Museveni when he was our age they go on to give us a story of 1980 this is in a book written by Museveni these are his words Museveni goes on to say on December 10th 1980 Ugandans went to the polls by late afternoon on December 11th, it was clear that UPC and Obote were heading for a resounding defeat. In spite of all the rigging that they had done at earlier stages of registration of voters, nomination of candidates, demarcation of electoral boundaries, etc., the UPC was seized with panic. Paulo Mwanga, at the time Obote's proxy as head of government, took over the powers of the Electoral Commission and by his decree of December 11, 1980, the decree stopped the returning officers and the Electoral Commission itself from declaring any results unless such results were personally approved by Mwanga. The decree further directed that all returning officers should not, on, should not submit their constituency results to the Electoral Commission, but to himself, Paulo Mwanga, Obote's man at the time. A record fine of 70,000 in 1980, that was more than 200 million today. That was the fine imposed by Mwanga for anybody who did not comply with the decree. At a secret meeting throughout the 19, throughout the night of December 11th, Obote and Mwanga proceeded to allocate seats to their party cohorts, even those that had not even gotten 10% of the votes. The following day of 12th December 1980, using their control of the national radio, the army, the police and other state machinery, and backed by the government of Tanzania, Obote and Mwanga announced their coup 
One became the president, the other became the vice president and minister for defense. Once again, a minority and unpopular clique was imposed on the people of Uganda, leaving them with no option but to take up arms in defense of the democratic rights. Those awards of Yoweri Museveni in 1980 up to 1985. Do you find any similarity to today? If you only remove the name Obote and put the name Museveni, if you only remove the name Paulo Muanga and put a name of Yabakama, you will find that this whole writing becomes fresh again. Fellow Ugandans, we are back to that same point 40 years later. 40 years later, after losing more than half a million of our mothers and fathers, we are back to the same place. The same thing, and even worse, is happening today in our generation. So, what is the way forward? We don't believe in violence. We are tired. We are frustrated. We are hungry and we are angry. But at least we still have a brain. We have conscience. We respect life. We are many, much more than these criminals. We are younger, therefore faster and stronger than them. We are more connected. We could be violent, but we choose not to use violence because violence only begets violence. Darkness cannot remove darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot remove hate. Only love can do that. Therefore, violence cannot stop violence. Only non-violence can do that. And we know that for us to win Museveni, we must not out outdo him in violence. We must not outdo him in evil. We must be different. That's why we don't want to be evil. That's why we don't want to be violent. But what is the solution? I am glad to inform you, friends, that according to the research that we've done and the studies that we've had, we know that nonviolence is much more powerful than violence. Yes, violent revolutions have succeeded a few times in the past, including here in Uganda, but at a very high cost in terms of property and life. But we also know that nonviolence has succeeded many, many more times than violence. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we decided to despise violence and take up nonviolence. Because nonviolence is much easier to participate in. So as a way forward, ladies and gentlemen, having tried all the legal ways and seeming to hit a wall, we remembered that we have not exhausted all legal ways. For example, Article 3. In fact, I'll start with Article 29 of our, pop of our Constitution. Gives us the right to demonstrate and protest peacefully against any injustice. It is within our Constitution. And Article 3 of our Constitution makes it not only right, but a duty for the people of Uganda to rise up peacefully and unarmed. As a matter of fact, it gives us the right to use everything possible to restore constitutionalism once it has been overthrown. It's clear that General Museveni, using the military and other guns that carry guns but not in uniform, has overthrown the constitution. So we, as the people of Uganda, have a duty, not only right, but a duty to rise to the occasion and restore constitutionalism in this, our country. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it's with that backdrop that we decided to announce peaceful protests. We called for peaceful protests because they are lawful. We called for peaceful protests because they work. We called for peaceful protests because they are our solution now. We know that Museveni is the kind of person that will respond to anything with violence. He only knows violence. He cannot tell us anything anymore. He cannot convince us anymore. 
and therefore he will resort to violence at the quickest provocation he resorts to violence and indeed since the day we called for peaceful protests in the last four days more than 230 innocent Ugandans have been arrested and remanded many of them are in Chitalia as a matter of fact even those that were not protesting but because this is a very scared regime they were arrested and they are remanded in Chitalia the abductions increased and they continue I am here first and foremost to give you confidence brothers and sisters that this is possible it is very very possible our struggle continues General Museveni is cracking down on all people of Uganda even when they are not violent because he is scared of the people but I want to remind you friends that just here in the neighborhood in Sudan Museveni's friend Omar El Bashir had apparently won the election with 94.05 he gave himself 94.05 in an election in 2015 and he gave himself the majority in parliament but in 2018 he was kicked off by unarmed citizens who knew their rights and they asserted their rights a few of them were killed very many of them were imprisoned but they cannot imprison all of us allow me to thank and salute all the friends that have responded to this our call we've seen ugandans protesting i saw uh, some led by honorable nyeko derrick protesting peacefully kneeling down and showing their dissatisfaction i saw others in kawempe i saw many in gulu and some in ginger and in various places that i've not uh, yet seen i thank you ladies and gentlemen I know it is tough, but we might begin small, but with consistency, we will be there. We should remind ourselves that consistency breaks resistance. So let us insist, well knowing that what we're doing is legal, what we're doing is right. I want to remind you that it is not going to be one day or one way. No. No. It might take longer, it might take a week, a month, or even several months. But if we insist, they cannot arrest all of us. Because for as long as you know that you have not broken any law, we must be proud to suffer for what's right to stand together, to protest together, to go to jail together, and to win together, because we will certainly win. We know that. You should know that. So be motivated, be encouraged, ladies and gentlemen. Keep going. Like I said, it might not take one day or one form of protest. So take it upon yourselves. Devise means of protesting. I encourage those that have been intimidated so much because it's true the police and military has been deployed everywhere to just brutalize anybody that dares to speak out but friends these people cannot be on our streets forever no i know that museveni because he cannot pay these security uh, operatives that he deploys on the streets probably that's why he condones the um the the, the extortion they're carrying out on the innocent citizens why because to him they're paying themselves regardless of the insecurity and the inconvenience that they're causing to the people but persist friends keep going do not give up we can do this and we are going to do it let us find various ways of protesting and we should go on to protest now it's at this note friends that i want to note this very very important issue and that is the issue of discipline 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 friends a revolution without discipline is dead at birth a revolution without discipline is going to be very quickly vulgarized we must be disciplined so that people join us we must be disciplined 
so that we can distinguish ourselves as the ones who are right while our detractors are wrong. We must exercise discipline so that we even encourage people to join us, so that we let people trust us. We must be disciplined. I want to discourage the business of maligning leaders, of calling out leaders of some of our colleagues using social media to blackmail their colleagues. That is not what we are here for. We know that there are challenges everywhere. What one person has not done, you can do. The blackmail and constant calling out and constant, you know, um, false, falsehoods that are training on social media, they do not help our revolution. They only help the dictator. And that is what the dictator wants. So I discourage that. I don't support it. And it must stop. Kachino kanchogere ni muluganda ni kwa nojange. Echigambo cha discipline. Ndabe banji nyo kubanafe. Ngate tebabana dala ku social media. Ngabama lininga. Ngaba saba ateba nabwe. Bebali mustrago yemu. Techina chichi tuongera kogu kuda ku social media. No yogere raba freedom fight haba no. Muno chale mendu kola. Gosobo lo chikola. Echo kuda okusoja gana. No kogere ngane bifukule. Ama fukule. Techi tuongera ko. Wabula chongera ko dictator. As a matter of fact. Dictator achikoze sanyo. Okuteka ulu atika mufe. Okutua ula ya ula. Okuteka ulu tesi gangana. To create doubt amongst the forces of change. Kichina chichi kuongera ko gokuda ku social media. No kolo kutateba kulembeze vano. I've been seeing it and I don't like it. Echo njaga la chikome e mbagira wo. Tetsoba la kubanga tuluwa njisa na chema lila. Tetsoba la kubanga tuluwa njisa umutu wa wamba abantu bafe. Ata abantu bafe. Ate amanyi ketuwa ndiko yiseza okuluwa niri laba nafe. Aba wambibu wa wali mkutulu gunyizi wa esawa zino. Aba wali mkulaibu wa. Aba chala wali mkwati wa. Ata amanyi agu. Netuga oza tiagamu tuluwa njisi ganyengu. Manyi, nti abakule mbeze banji nyo, abata nasobola kola cheba ina kola, uruwe mbeira jetulimu. Na ye, ulicha ale meduo kola, eitha mutu ukirile, oyugire na ye personali, obagu ochikole. Abantu abatulabe yobagu wa munya amanyi, ngabala watuze mkusoja gana. Echo chile meseza nyo, bana yugando kwenu nula kumare banga dene, chitukumi dembu sile. So, njagala chikome, mbagira wo. Because it does not do us any good, it just divides us, it weakens us, it discourages us, it discourages the leaders, it discourages everybody. While I call upon leaders to give leadership to their people, but let us do that with respect. We've always said that we shall see and judge people by their actions. Na ye, tuwe wale, ebi gambe bi tema tema mu, banafe, oba ebi nafuya, banafe. Olibu wabano obu nafu, tumutu kirirenga ye, kubatu liba kulembeze, era abantu, batu esiga. I want to request you comrades to focus. There's going to be a lot of diversion. A lot of diversion. You're going to be told various stories. I've been watching various groups. A group will come and say, ah, do not protest because you're going to cause us problems. Don't be diverted. Let us keep our eyes on the prize, ladies and gentlemen. As I conclude, I want to call upon the leaders, all leaders, Religious leaders, cultural leaders, political leaders, and all forces of change. Friends, this is not a call of only the National Unity Platform. This is a call of the people of Uganda. You can make that call in your own voice, in your own shade, in your own color, for as long as it is for the people of Uganda. This is a time when we must stand all together. Whether you are a political leader or you're a religious leader, let us be mindful for what is right. Our people are being murdered day and night. It can no longer be about the politicians. It can no longer be about a certain religious sect. 
about a certain tribe. No, it's about all of us as the people of Uganda. So let us stand together and offer leadership to the people of Uganda. Let us reject what is wrong and embrace what is right, regardless of the language. Let us reject what is oppressive and embrace what is right. Let us reject what is unjust and embrace what is just to all the leaders. It would be the best experience for the people of Uganda if we can all speak in one voice, with one voice. We don't have to stand on the same podium to say this, but the people know when you speak for them and when you speak not for them. So kindly embrace the call. All leaders, make the same call. Let us have our people stand up and liberate themselves. I encourage all of us to use social media, knowing that it is hard for such a message of freedom to be permitted on TV or radio. But let us use social media because it's very powerful and all other means of communication. I want to encourage you not to give up, ladies and gentlemen. We have come from far. We have gained a lot of victories. We are glad that as we stand here, the people of Uganda are all aware and awake. It has never been the way it is. From the educated to the uneducated, the young, the old, the men, the, the women, the, 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 the rich, the poor, all tribes, all religions, we all know what is right. So we should celebrate that as we move on. Let us not give up. We shall certainly win. We shall certainly get our freedom. Do not give up, ladies and gentlemen. Awamba sina change chenyonge rako. Kweko kwa wado kwa gira kwa Bobi Wine. Kwa president chetuafunye mu. Ntiba mbaka lulu. No kubira antino ye. Tanaba kugeme vwa. Achete gereze dagara. Na agamba daily monitor. Eno muirida sente nyingi nyo. Uluvanyuwa kubira antiba mwairi zambu no ye gema. Ida nabasa kukola full page. Apology front page. Ngabeto onda. Wejita vecho wivagendo kumuya mbako. Okuso onda sente ze. Ezo kula ida. Ida narabula. Takaenda kukiriza mtu ye na kuyingi na mtu ke kaze za kumule mesa kula ira. Mm, awajia kufano mtu. Ewe ya gambia awajia kufano mtu. Opinion yo kucholo woza. Bobi wa inchi ayo get the president Museven. Mokomment section now. Chokacho kacho wote kaotu la venge jetamu na mu. It is the final channel. Be in the know. I'm out. <tune>